I absolutely love Ratchet and Clank, and sadly, I don't even have a PS5, so I haven't even been able to play Rift Apart. But when I saw Rivet, I just knew I had to at least attempt to try to recreate her, and this was a huge project for me. So I really hope you enjoy it. Be sure to stick around if you want to see the makeup come to life. So let's get into the ears and goggles. I cut the ears out of 10 millimeter white EVA foam and dremeled the edges to taper them and just put them away for later. Make some rings for the base of the goggles. Cut the ends at a 45 degree angle so they will meet the joint smoother. Took some thin plastic and cut out circles for the glass part of the goggles and glue them into place. Taking a thin piece that would act like the top edge of the goggles and then use some foam clay to smooth the seam. Cut a small piece for the center part and just adjust the curve cut as needed. Dremel the edge to round the shape on the top. Burn line detail around each goggle and also put little square details in the center piece. Then put the pieces unglued to get an estimate of the shape for the leather piece under the goggles and cut it out. Then heated up the piece and pressed it into a stone cast of my face for the shape. Use this to get the curvature of the goggle pieces while attaching the center piece. Now for all the rest of this, I would have preferred to have a full head, but it's currently being used for another killer clown head. Attach this strap to help hold it in place to glue the goggles onto it and created the buckle details on the side. The strap I attached didn't match where the pieces were gonna go, but I didn't worry about that because I did end up just cutting the strip away, figuring out the curve to the cut to create the shape and making each preceding piece where they meet, I added a 45 degree cut to make it look more correct like it could move than a straight cut. Now that the pieces are made, start gluing them into place. I attached each ear onto a strip of foam. This is going to give it a better foundation when it sits against the head. I rounded the strip after I removed it off the head form. So here's where it gets a little convoluted. Since I built this on my actual head, used a piece of foam across the top of the head, like a headband, then lined up the goggles and attached them. Once that was in place, I added another strip of foam across the back and cut off the original top one. I did this all in the mirror and didn't have the camera set up for filming, so I didn't get to catch all the frustration that this process produced. I also added new straps to the goggles to help hide the ear edges. Rivet's goggles have straps that come back along her ears, so I added these pieces to also help reinforce the piece. Just took two pieces of foam and adhered them under the goggles and down to the back strap. Time to paint. Created a brown color since for some reason I didn't even have any. Uh, but once the straps and the piece behind the goggles were coated, use some ochre with that brown to create a mix to add worn edge look. And this is going to give it more of a leathery material look. Made a silver and black mixture for the goggles so that they're still dark, but there's a little bit of a metallic shine. Then dry brush some mixture of white and silver to add scrapes to the edges. And there's the goggles. Now for the ears. A mixture of Mehron Paradise paint in white and a touch of purple for the base color, since it will be easier to match come the body paint stage. For the tuft of hair, bundled some white yarn together and brushed it out with a cat brush. Then also airbrushed it with that same white purple mixture. Added the stripes to the ears using Mehron white, purple, and a tiny touch of dark blue. And just paint it to give it a bit of a fur effect. Lightly going over it once it dries to build layers. Glued the hair under the goggles. For the earrings, I did heat up some EVA half domes and wrapped them around a small bottle. Frayed them silver and hot glued them in place. 
did program a NeoPixel ring to go inside. And then using some spongy white crafting foam, I cut out the shape using this to diffuse the light. And I do know that there is LED foam for this, but this was more accessible for me at the time. Line it with some black EVA foam and then frame the top to get it all smooth and then painted it silver. I did end up adding some black airbrush paint on the outer edges and spraying the rest of it with a translucent blue. Now for the makeup. I'm gonna start out with applying a latex bald cap and gluing that down with Telesis 8 silicone adhesive. I decided to do a bald cap so I wouldn't have to worry about any of my hair showing through from under the headpiece. And go ahead and trim the excess. Use some Telesis Betabond Plus for the edges to blend it better into the skin. I also used a glue stick to glue down my eyebrows and powder everything down with Skin Illustrator Zero Color Powder. Mayron Paradise Paint Palette, taking the purple and white to make a mixture for the skin tone. And I'm stippling it all the way around to give it more of a furry soft texture than just a solid color. And don't forget that left arm. And just gradually building up the layers and it's fine if the mixture is not exactly the same from the first layer because it's just gonna give it more texture and interest. I'm also leaving the middle part of my face open because I do not wanna be applying the glue for the nose piece over top of makeup. And now I took some purple eyeshadow and started to kind of sketch out the eyelids. And it really wasn't blending as well as I would like because of the Elmer's glue. I went ahead and added some alcohol to that eyeshadow to further draw it. I could have used some Mayron at this point, but I wasn't thinking about it. I did the same approach with the eyebrows. I just used a brown eyeshadow just to sketch it out and see what I was working with. Now back to that Mayron palette and grab the violet and put in an airbrush. And I'm gonna softly airbrush the outline. And I even did a little bit under the jaw just to give my face some shape. And just kind of softly blending the eyelid area. It's okay if it gets too dark because I do end up going over with a lighter tone to soften it back up. Put a little bit of powder on my eyelids because they do tend to get oily and this helps set the makeup. Go in with some white Neron and just softly airbrush some of the highlight points and soften some of that purple. I'm also sculpting the brow area. I start to shape the eyelids a little bit. Still in the beginning stages, because I still have to apply that nose. I went ahead and added the three stripes on her left arm, and I'm just using the same mixture that I used for the stripes on the ears. Now let's get into how I created the nose piece. Took my stone face cast and filled the area with some tin foil. Once it's pressed down, started adding some of the white foam clay. I realized I didn't have the vacuform plastic piece over the form, so I grabbed that real quick and continued. The foam is going to remove much easier from the plastic than it would if it was directly on the stone. I added a nose shape to the piece. Now that it's dry, I took a pin and carefully got under the edge to lift it up. Remove the tin foil, and here you'll see there's a hollow shell, and use some Betabond Plus or Prosade to seal and smooth the surface then powdered it all down. Taking some thickened Prosade and sculpted a more refined nose shape and smoothed it with water. And here's a look at the mesh material I like to add to rigid prosthetics like this. It gives you a surface that's able to grab onto the skin better. This is a technique I also use for the Kubo Monkey muzzle. Add some glue to the inner part and gently press the fabric in. Now I'm just gonna check it real quick to see if there's any areas I need to clean off. Use more of that Telesis adhesive and carefully lay the piece down. Go around and lightly press that fabric into the glue. The lip's a little long, so I took some safety scissors and trimmed that up. Now carefully press some powder into the glue, then using some latex to help blend it into the skin. Took some paper towel and pulled it apart so I had just one layer and tearing small little pieces to lay over the edge and then adding some more latex on top. I did want it a little smoother, so I went ahead and added some thickened Prosade over any of the dips and carefully smoothed it out with water. Then powder everything down once it's dry. Go ahead and take that purple and white mixture and paint in all the exposed area. I also used this time to soften the eye area a little bit by just spraying over it very lightly. Then taking Mayron White, brighten under the eye and the high cheek area. 
take KVD Vegan Beauty Super Pomade and white out and apply it under the eyes. I wanted to apply a product that would hold up to my eyes tearing up once I put the scleras in. Aeron palette and take the pink color for the nose and lower lip. Paint the lower lip smaller than my natural lip. Vegan Beauty tattoo liner and start to line my eyes a little bit. I am gonna go back and refine it because my eyes are probably gonna water with the contacts. Then also take that liner and extend the corners of the mouth. Now taking some of the white Mehron and brighten up underneath the lip. Back to that Mehron palette, I'm going to take the dark brown and some black and mix it for an even darker brown. And go ahead and finalize those eyebrows. Dippled some Beta Bond on the side of the head where the headpiece is going to lay. I also added some of that mesh fabric on the straps on the headpiece to give a little more surface to glue down and carefully get it all in place. I then went and stippled some more of that Beta Bond on top of the lace. And now that we're looking pretty cool, gonna grab some KVD Vegan Beauty Lash Liner and fill in my waterline. And go ahead and powder where we put the glue down. And I airbrushed some of the Mehron Violet as a shading and contour color. And went back in with some of the white Mehron and start to build out the brow above the eyelid and the nose. And now that we have the contacts in, let's finish up those eyes. I did clean up around the eyes just a little bit. Then I'm going to go ahead and finish lining around the eyes with the tattoo liner and put on some false lashes. Put some of that Vegan Beauty Lash Liner on a brush to clean up the lash line. Then taking some white eyeshadow, I added a highlight point to give the illusion of a crease and then brought that highlight down to my natural lid. Also added a little bit on the bridge of the nose. I will have tutorials coming out for how I built the hammer and her right arm. Don't want to miss out? Be sure to subscribe. See you next time.